Now let's continue making a very basic UI, only this time doing it entirely by code. So as you can see, I'm already inside the code folder here in the UI basics folder, and I'm going to create a new script. Again, it's going to be a startup script, and this time I'm going to call it UI code demo. Just so that we have everything already set up on our scene side, I'm also going to add a new entity, and we're going to call this UI code. And then when we click the add component button, I'm going to say UI code demo. So obviously this script is empty and isn't really doing anything, but that's what's going to change right now. So let's start by making a couple of variables. At first, we are going to specify a sprite font variable because all the UI elements that we're going to make, they need to have a font. If we don't load a font and set those specifically to the UI elements, our UI elements would not have any visible text. So I'm just going to call this font. As you'll notice, it's not being recognized right now as a valid type. So we need to include its namespace, which is stride.graphics. Next, we're going to make a button, as we've seen before, which we also have to include using stride UI controls. And finally, a private text block. Let's just call that text block. Okay, that's looking good. So at first, we need to load in an actual font. Inside the editor, we go back to the Solution Explorer, where there is a folder called UI. In that folder, I've loaded in a couple of fonts for us to use. If you want to load in your own font, if you've, for instance, downloaded that from some website, or you have an artist that made a font for you, you can click the Add Asset button, go to Font, and select any of the font options here available. For this tutorial's sake, I've already created a font which is called the Open Sans font. Now, in order for us to load this in, all we have to do is right mouse button on it, copy the asset URL, and go back to our code. Then we can select font is content.load of type sprite font, and between the parentheses, we have to specify that URL that we've just copied. Next up is the button. I'm going to make a nice method for this because it contains a little bit more load than just one line. So I'm going to say create new button. And I'm going to let Visual Studio assist me and generate a new method for us. And in here, we are going to make a new button. And Obviously, we have to set a couple of properties to this button. Otherwise, we wouldn't be seeing a lot of things. So let's first set a name. Now, that doesn't really do anything in our use case, but I just think it's a good practice to give your UI element a name, especially if you're making it from code. So I'm just going to call this my button by code. Next up is saying where this button is going to be, because later on we're going to add this to a stack panel, but we need to say where it's going to go. And I want to say, let's center this at the center of our UI panel. And instead of having this entire namespace here, I'm just going to remove that, which is going to give me back this error. But if I press Alt Enter again, I can include the stride.ui namespace. So we don't have to have that entire name once more. Next up is saying what is the background color of this particular button. So I'm going to use the uh, color this color static uh, variable here, and we can select a color, a predefined color for us to use here. So I'm going to go with a rather dark color. So I'm going to type in dark. What do we have? Dark magenta. That sounds really nice. I haven't used that in a while, I guess. So I'm just going to use that. 
And then we need to say, hey, we have this button right now. But as you recall from the first part of the UI basics tutorial, a button exists out of the top button itself, but it also contained a child UI element, which is a text block. So in order for us to have a text block in our button, we have to fill the content property of our button. And we're, be, we're going to be making a new text block UI element now. Since this button contains a text block, and we're also going to be needing another text block to show the actual time once we've pressed the button, let's also make a helper method to create a text block. Let's generate that method. And we're going to be returning a text block in this case. And instead of creating a new variable, which we return later on, let's return that text block instantly. And what kind of properties do we have for a text block? Now, the first thing, very simple, the actual text itself. And since we want to be able to pass that into a text block that we're making, let's add this as an argument or as a parameter. Next up is the text color, which we are also going to pass in as an argument. So I'm going to call this text color, which is going to be the parameter name. And we're going to be doing a similar thing for the background color. There we go. Now we have to set the font that we've loaded in. Now let's set the alignment of our UI elements. We want to center all the UI elements in the middle of our panel that we're going to make. So let's say horizontal alignment is right in the center. Great. And let's fill in those extra parameters that we can fill in. So the text that we're going to show is show me the time. And then as a lovely text color, let's pick light yellow. And we could set the background to something like orange red. Now that the button is entirely complete, let's copy that method that we've used here for the button. And let's also use that for the text block, which is going to show the actual time. Uh, it doesn't have any pre uh, any pre filled text, maybe some dots to give you an idea that the values still need to be set. Let's also give this a light yellowish text color. But instead of orange red, we're going to be creating a new color all by ourselves instead of using these predefined colors. So we're going to say new color. And then we can fill in a bunch of parameters. One of those options is by specifying three values, the RGB values. And since we're using light yellow as a text color, uh, red is probably a really good background color. And that is a range between zero and two, five, five. If we would launch our game right now, the two UI elements that we've made would not be visible. And that's because we need to create a UI component that contains a UI page. So luckily, we can create this by saying get or create UI component, which will make the UI component for us. And inside this UI component, we have a page property, which will be empty by default. So we have to say new UI page. And inside this UI page, we always have a root element. And this root element is always a type of panel. So in the first part of the tutorial, we've used the default panel, which is called a grid. But there are other types like a like an actual regular panel. But in our case, we're going to be using a stack panel. And stack panels are kind of useful for menus, for instance, because as soon as we start adding UI elements, they will be placed right un underneath each other. Or if we want to have a stack panel that places them horizontally, we could do that as well. 
So we're going to say new stack panel, which is not recognized by default. We have to include stride.ui.panels. And then we can specify some properties. Let's first start by setting the width of our stack panel, which is going to be around 600 pixels. The height is going to be 200 pixels. Let's add a space there. Then we can set its orientation, which by default is already vertical, but just in case we want to be a little bit more explicit, let's set it to orientation dot vertical. Then let's also move it away from the edge of the screen just a little bit. So we can say new thickness on the margin property, which takes a couple of parameters, left, top, right, and bottom. Now those first two are fine, but we do want to move it slightly away from the right edge of the screen as well as the bottom edge of the screen. Let's set a very obvious background color. Uh, white isn't really a nice color. I'm going to go with lime green. It's going to be really bright. And then finally, all we have to do now is add those, add the button and the text block to this UI page and this stack panel. And we do that by using the children property. And in here, we can add the button and the text block. And now we're pretty much good to go. So now let's run this scene and see what happens. Let's start the UI interaction start scene. And this is starting to look pretty much the way that we've defined it thus far. The only thing we've forgotten here is to set the alignment so that the entire container or the stack panel is being displayed at the bottom right. So let's just close that again. And we go to our stack panel and we say if we type in horizontal alignment and instead of center, we're going to say align this all the way to the right. And then for the vertical alignment, align this all the way to the bottom. Let's try that one more time. And there we go. We now have this button which had the background color to purple. And then this button contains a text block, which has a red background, and then this light yellowish text. Again, the colors really don't match, but it makes us able to distinguish the various parts of the UI elements. And the only final thing that we need to do right now is set up the event for this button, because right now it's not doing anything. But I guess we already know how to do that. We have this button created here in this method, so we can say button dot click and we have to add in the actual code for this so we say show me the time that's the name of our method and since we've created a reference to that text block earlier we're going to say text block dot text is date time dot now let's say to short date time string Let's run our sample one more time. Go to UI interaction start. And if we click show me the time, we get the local time that I'm recording this tutorial with, which is 7.53 p.m., which you can see is the time right here. And that also means that we've gotten to the end of this first tutorial of the C Sharp intermediate tutorial project with the Stride engine. I hope you learned something and I will see you with the next tutorial where we will be digging into collision triggers.